Here come the teams, West Ham United in the claret and blue that they're so well known for. Chelsea in their changed gold kit. And you will notice that it is a certain Magdalena Eriksson leading them out back into the starting 11 tonight. Chelsea looking to win this competition for the third time and looking to continue an excellent head-to-head -head record against West Ham United, who are trying to upset the odds here. These sides have met 12 times previously. Chelsea winning 11 of those and all three Conti Cup meetings, two of which were knockout encounters, including a 4-2 win when these sides met in the quarter-final last season and a 6-0 win in the semi-final a couple of seasons ago. Have to go back to March 2019 for a rare occasion where West Ham, indeed the only occasion West Ham didn't lose to Chelsea, but won or draw that day. Let's check on the teams. Starting with West Ham United, pretty easy selection meeting it seems for Paul Koncheski. They are unchanged from the side that won 1-0 at Liverpool in that quarter-final. Also unchanged from the 11 that got a very creditable 0-0 draw at Arsenal in the Women's Super League at the weekend. The first time they've ever avoided defeat against the Gunners. Minor change on the bench, Halle Hussein replaces Kira Flannery in the substitutes for that one. Emma Hayes has shuffled her pack, four alterations from the team that won 3-1 at Spurs in the quarter-final. And Katrin Berger, Neve Charles, Frank Kirby and Magdalena Eriksson coming in for Zatura Musevic, Kadisha Buchanan, Jess Carter and Yelena Chankovic. Daniela brunyas dotir certainly going to be crucial for the Hammers tonight. She is having quite the season. Nine goals across all competitions. Does so much more than just score, though. Is their leader, a talisman, and has three goals in the Conti Cup in this campaign. It's been a big part of helping them get to this point. As for Chelsea, well, that duo are going to take some stopping. Sam Kerr and Lauren James. Don't forget about Guru Wrighton as well. His lineup stacked full of quality, of course. Sam Kerr has scored a get hat trick against West Ham United before back in December 2020 in the WSL and already has multiple hat tricks this season, including against Vlasnia in the Champions League and Liverpool in the FA Cup. Paul Koncheski was eyeing a cup run this season and he certainly got that wish. They're into the fifth round of the FA Cup where they'll face Aston Villa towards the end of this month. But for now, their focus is on causing a shock here. Emma Hayes, meanwhile, chasing yet more silverware with this Chelsea side. And of course, are fighting on all four fronts this season, both Europe and then domestically as well. That Champions League quarter-final draw coming tomorrow. Luis Sanders is your referee. West Ham United in claret and blue to attack from left to right as we look at things in this first half. Chelsea in the all gold, kicking from right to left. Can Chelsea reach the Conti Cup final for a fourth consecutive season? Or can West Ham cause an upset? Before kick off, a moment to take a stand by taking a knee against all forms of racism and discrimination. Incredibly important this game is for all of us to enjoy it, regardless of your identity. Off and underway here in East London for this Conti Cup semi-final. Chelsea chasing yet another Conti Cup final appearance and looking to retake the crown that they lost last year thanks to that second half comeback from Manchester City in the final. West Ham United, meanwhile, looking to reach the Conti Cup final for the first time in their history. Of course, were FA Cup finalists back in 2019 when defeated 3-0 by Manchester City at Wembley. And the Hammers cause a shock. Going to be one in midfield and one by Brynjars Dottir. Good block on that from Ingle. Now Bright. Charles. Lauren James. Name to keep a particular eye on at the moment. What a season she is having. Magdalena Eriksson back into the side tonight after missing the last three games for Chelsea. Not through injury, through selection. Right forward, it didn't quite run for James. James in there on the press against Smith. Sissoko sends it forward. A little foul in there from Perisay. 
with Perise in at right back tonight. One of four changes from Chelsea's league team at the weekend. Ericsson, Kirby and Ann Berger all also coming in for Musovic, Buchanan, Carter and Fleming. Those four alterations from Chelsea side that won 3-2 against Spurs. Arsenal and Manchester United dropping points. Means that Chelsea are top of the table now. Not just top, but top even when factoring in other clubs' potential games in hand and similar situations. Chelsea chasing a fourth straight WSL crown. Two points clear of Manchester United, five points clear of Arsenal with a game in hand, and five points clear of Manchester City as well. West Ham, meanwhile, in seventh, two points off Aston Villa, who they'll meet in the FA Cup soon. Three points off Everton, having played a game more than both of those sides. This time finishing sixth last season, which was their best ever league season. Here come Chelsea. Kirby sets it wide. Charles links up with Wrighton. Happy Lee Stringer in there to intercept. And then Wrighton winning the foul. Free kick in a dangerous area here. Lee Stringer initially getting the interception, then getting a bit of a chunk of Guru Wrighton. Guru Wrighton, such a danger from situations like this. Wrighton's little clip ball in, and it's stabbed goalwards, and Chelsea lead in just the fourth minute. Sam Kerr yet again, her 17th of the season across all competitions. A simple enough routine, good ball in from Wrighton, and it's a very clever first-time finish from Sam Kerr. It is classic Sam Kerr. And West Ham United really do have it all to do now. It was a tough task even before kickoff. Sam Kerr, who opened the scoring in last season's Conti Cup final, which Chelsea went on to lose 3 1. It's just given them a big boost in trying to get back there this season. And Kerr might get onto this as well. Just run on into the grateful gloves of Mackenzie Arnold. Shimizu. A little touches on James. I think not just every women's football manager in England, but most across Europe are potentially plotting ways to try and stop. Of course, Chelsea will find out who their quarter-final opponents will be tomorrow when that draw is made on Friday lunchtime. Could face any of Roma, Bayern Munich or Lyon. Won't face Chelsea because both sides won their respective groups as Brynjols Dottria sets it wide for a save. This time looking for a first attack of significance. Sai's so he's got options. It's just taken enough time that Chelsea can regroup a bit. And then the offside flag up against Phyllis. Just the early nerve settler that Chelsea fans would have wanted. Gura Wrighton with the assist. A goal at the weekend against Tottenham. Her first goal contribution for a little while for a player of her extremely high standards. She's got an assist to add to that one as well. Listening to a few Chelsea fans' podcasts in the build-up to this one, they were particularly pleased to see Wrighton on the score sheet. There was a period earlier on in the season where she was... Uh, Pulling in assists, left, right and centre. Cuthbert. Charles, out on the left flank tonight in the early stages. Now Wrighton wins the corner. Conceded by Risa Shimizu. Chelsea attacking towards their fans in this first half. They're doing everything they can to suck the ball into that net for a second time already. 
for joining us late. Sam Kerr already putting Chelsea in front mere moments ago. What can Chelsea conjure up from this set piece? Perisse to deliver. Perisse's ball in. Smashed clear by Shimizu. Second to Sasha Assessa options. And Charles, who has been showing her versatility tonight, and the value to Emma Hayes' side in that sense. Ingle forward for Kirby. Kirby shimmying through. A little interception in there, and a really important one. And a chance for West Ham on the break. Grignard Stottier leading it, as she so often does for the Hammers. It's a four and four if they work this quickly. A little touch past Bright, who recovered really well against Snell. And seeds the corner. It could have been a lot worse for Chelsea here. Lily Bright showing all her experience. And West Ham United find a quick response. And in good form coming into this one. Wins at Liverpool and then Wolves in the cup. And a draw at Arsenal. So it is in and headed away by Bright. Back towards goal by Shimizu. Brignas Dottier was in there. And Katrinberger did well. And then it bounces and pinballs around. For ending up in the grateful gloves of the experienced German. And Katrinberger, one of a number of Chelsea players who've got no shortage of this competition and memories from it in their veins across recent years. Kirby one of Berger, one of five players who have started in all of the last three Conti Cup finals. Millie Bright, Sophie Ingle, Gura Wrighton and Sam Kerr, the other four. Drew Spence came off the bench in all three. And of course is now at Spurs. Aaron Mielder starting the first two and then it was an unused substitute last season. Ericsson. Now Bright spots the run of James and finds the run of James brilliantly. This is real danger for West Ham. James's first time cross. It almost fell for Kerr. Sissoko did really well in a tight space. All class from the French centre half. He's offering herself on the overlap now. Sissoko in behind. He's looking for Asai. A good personal friend of Harvey Sissoko's. Indeed, it was Sissoko's presence at West Ham that was one of the factors that persuaded Asai to make the summer switch here from Bayern Munich. Asai, who, if they can get some service into her, will be a key threat for West Ham United. In this first ten minutes, have been very much on the back foot. Perisse. Now James. James finding Kerr and now taking it forward. Lauren James in behind for Kirby, who has right and might just go herself. It's Frank Kirby and it's 2 0 Chelsea. Utter domination early on here from the Blues. And Frank Kirby, who scored in the quarter-final win against Spurs, has won in the semi-final too. Started by James, linked up with Kerr nicely, helped it onto Kirby. Chelsea cutting West Ham United apart. Remember that people had that acronym with Kirby once upon a time, with Kirby spelt K E R R, you know, into the, the Australian. And some clever Chelsea fans are going to have to come up with some kind of an acronym that includes Kerr, Kirby, Wrighton, and Lauren James. What a quartet they are to have. Thank 
Indeed, it won't surprise you to know that Chelsea fans were raving about Lauren James in particular after the weekend that Blue Royalty podcast has three word match reports which included the likes of Lauren James supremacy, more James siblings, amongst other things, as well as on a slightly more constructively critical note, stop leaking goals in relation to the Blues having conceded six in their last four games. There's Charles burrowing down that left-hand side, Wrighton. Ingle ticks things on, as she always does at the base of the midfield. Cuff but wide for James. Chelsea really do look at their very best in these opening stages and West Ham are struggling to live with them. Here's James trying to make something happen. Now Cuthbert takes over. Ingle. And you can tell Chelsea are on top because it's only the Chelsea fans you can hear. James. It's just mesmerising to watch at the moment. Was uh, doing an interview about her incredible goal against Spurs, where she said, "I just remember the player engaging and me going on a dribble, and I just thought, let me go and have a shot." And the reporter said, "Easy as that." And she said, "I really don't know how to explain that. I just do what is in front of me." But she makes the extraordinary look very simple. Well, one back in a dangerous area by Perry Say, but almost got through for Kerr. Good interception by Sissoko. Brinyas Dottier in there fighting for it. Now Kerr. Has options. A little cheeky back heel for Charles. Just wasn't quite where Neve Charles needed it to be. But Chelsea are absolutely all over West Ham United in the early stages here. It's an important interception by Sissoko, otherwise it's potentially a clear run for 3-0. I think I saw the run of Charles. Didn't quite find her with the precision she might have liked. Chelsea joined Chelsea from Liverpool when Liverpool were relegated from the WSL. Wrighton sends that one forward. And Arnold can gather and just try and provide some stability for this West Ham side. They've really been on the back foot early doors. West Ham got a core of players out there have been a big part of them getting so far, of which Arnold is one. Grace Fisk, he's a Shimizu, and Vivian Asai, the other three who have started in all five of their Conti Cup games so far this season. Been fixtures in the 11. Ericsson. Wrighton. And Charles. Right. Both these sides, of course, into the fifth round of the FA Cup. Chelsea will be at home against Arsenal. West Ham against Aston Villa in the last weekend of February. Of course, it is Arsenal who are waiting for either of these two in the final, having got past Manchester City last night. After extra time, Stina Vlachstinius with the winner. James being doubled up on, but that doesn't necessarily stop her. Gets the cross in. Way briefly by Stringer. Ingle brought it down. Stringer was there again. I say he's bundled off the ball by Bright. Wins the foul. That's good hold-up play from Asai. That's exactly what our team need her to do at this moment. Just give West Ham United a chance to try and find a foothold in this game. West Ham who have got to a Conti Cup semi-final before. And that had an ending that they'll hope won't be repeated tonight. 6-0 semi-final loss against Chelsea almost two years ago to the day. Back on the 3rd of February 2021, Vanilla Harder with a hat-trick. Engel, Beth England, now Spurs of course, and Frank Kirby all on the score sheet. Only Arnold, Fisk and Longhurst left from the West Ham United 11 that night. Crossing chance here for Shimizu, instead looked back. And for this back four, Fisk. has to come a long way out. 
Now Phyllis. Twisting and turning against Charles. Phyllis is cross. Cleared away by Eriksson. And Katrin Bergen might have come for it. It seemed to be a second of miscommunication between the two. Now West Ham have got a corner. They'll hope to make something of. They desperately need to make something of. Something for Paul Koncheski's side to feed off. Koncheski knows all too well what it's like to be out there for West Ham in a cup run. Scored in a final for the West Ham men's team against Liverpool in the 2005-06 season. And they lost out in a thrilling game. Snell to take the corner. Snell's ball in. Berger came out and didn't get there, but Bright did. And some good aggressive defence means that Hayashi can't get in the cross that she wanted to. And in fact, Chelsea have won the throw. And Katrin Berger, part of uh, an evolving goalkeeping situation at Chelsea that is worth keeping an eye on. Her contract through to 2024 with... 12-month option for the club. Zichir Musevic has just signed through to 2025. And reportedly, the Belgian goalkeeper, Nicky Evrad, will join Chelsea in the summer as well. Shimizu forward. Played by Charles. Now forward by Wright and Kerr, linking the play. There's plenty of runners. One of them is Kirby. He has no shortage of support. Charles. for Magdalena Eriksson. Of course, I mentioned the future in relation to goalkeepers. It's a pretty open secret. Not that it is much of one that Magdalena Eriksson and Vanilla Harder both out of contract at the end of the season. Remains to be seen where their futures lie beyond that. Made by Fisk. That with Charles. Stan fans doing their best to rouse a response from their team. Well, that's far I found a very difficult challenge here against the Chelsea side who've come out of the blocks flying. Fisk was fighting to get there, did just enough against Kerr. Shimizu. Chelsea on a big high press. Is he trying to win the throw? And did manage to do so. You can see what Wrighton thinks about it. Shimizu. This is Shimizu, a summer signing from Tokyo Verdi. And she won that quite the haul, five league titles and eight domestic cups. A Japanese international before making the switch to the WSL. It's been handy for them at fullback this season. Lauren James twisting and turning away in that sort of effortless way that she does. Now Perise on the overlap. Kerr. Eriksson. Such a good progressive passer with left foot of hers. Now it's worked forward to Wrighton. The last in across. Not overly convincing from Arnold. And as she clears under pressure from Cuthbert being fouled by Aaron Cuthbert Cuthbert has had to tactically adopt somewhat this season for Chelsea particularly in Europe into more of a number six role at times Scott also has no shortage of history in this competition part of the 11 that won in the final against Arsenal in 2020 and two Beth England goals for the difference and scoring in stoppage time after Leah Williamson had equalised with five minutes left of that one. Here is Kafka. Looking for Kerr. And Kafka, he's also known as uh, something of an entertainer in the Chelsea camp. Sam Kerr and Guru Wrighton, when doing a light-hearted piece about their travel taste, mentioned that that thinks that she can sing like Adele and uh, but in their view she can't also talking about uh, the fact that all the Swedes on the front of the bus like to play board games and also mentioning Jessie Fleming forgetting her passport once and never being allowed to hear the end of it of course Chelsea will find out tomorrow where their passports will be taking them in late March when it's the Champions League quarter-final draw they could get defending champions Leon 
German giants Bayern Munich or Roma who've had fairy tale debut European season to get into the quarters. Vinyas Dottier trying to lead a high press here. Kirby links it for Wrighton, who was trying to find Kerr. They really do look like they're going to score with every attack here, Chelsea. They look very dangerous. And West Ham is struggling to find the answers right now. Shimizu. Now Kerr. Feeling for offside, it's not coming, and Sam Kerr's found the top corner. I said it looks like they're going to score with every attack. And we're not even at the midway point of this first half. And they already have three. Chelsea rampant. A second for Sam Kerr. It was Cuthbert who got the interception in on Snell. And West Ham were busy appealing for an offside flag that never came. Whilst Kerr was busy rifling it into the top corner. You don't save those. I mentioned that Chelsea won 6-0 in a semi-final between these two a couple of years ago in this competition. They're halfway there already. You are watching Chelsea in top gear. And that is a frightening prospect, not just for West Ham, but for others in England and potentially in Europe too. I mentioned that quarter-final draw. The other group winners, Barcelona, Arsenal and Wolfsburg, so they'll be avoiding them. They could end up facing those three in the semi-finals. And Chelsea can't play PSG because they were in the same group. PSG finishing runners-up. And what was seen as something of a group of death. Real Madrid finishing third. And that was seen as a really encouraging sign for Chelsea, having in the previous season gone out of a similarly tough group. Vinyas Dottir. Shimizu. Nicely worked move this from West Ham. Stringer for Shimizu. Shimizu pokes it forward. He'll be allowed to just run out of play. And so Shimizu trying to make something happen down that flank. West Ham needs something to turn the tide of this game. Indeed, turn the tide of this head-to-head. -head. Twelve previous meetings. And the Hammers scoring just eight goals and conceding 40. Paul Kincheski is trying to work out just what he and his side do to respond to this start from Chelsea. 3-1 when these sides met in late September in the WSL. Vinyas Dottir had West Ham in front early. Kirby made it 1-1 before half-time and then second half goals from Kerr and Bright gave Chelsea the win despite Warren James missing a penalty late on. Shimizu to take the throw. You see sides also met in the quarterfinals last season. And Hayes watching on. Across comfortably more than a decade now at Chelsea has built quite the machine, particularly in terms of success domestically. Still chasing European glory on top, of course, losing out to Barcelona in the Champions League final a couple of seasons ago. With Berger. <laughs> West Ham quite content to let Chelsea have it there. And Chelsea looked to progress it a bit more from Charles. Instead, is forced back. Just off camera there, Frank Kirby having a little discussion with Charles about passing angles to look for to try and break out of West Ham's press. Ingle. Kirby. Right in with a little flick, Kirby continues her run. And the pass has too much on it for Charles. Sides, of course, meeting at the quarter-final stage of this competition last season. Where 
West Ham, who back then were led by Bobby Harder in the dugout rather than Paul Koncheski. Lost 4 2. Katrina Svikova now of Chelsea on the score sheet. Here's Cuthbert. James. James's little dink. It's so clever. And then there's Kerr, but the offside flag is up. It does feel like at the moment, at times, their interplay is so gorgeous. It might only be an offside flag that denies them. It is mesmerising, particularly from Kerr, James, Wrighton, but the whole Chelsea orchestra in synchronicity. The vision from James there, the audacity as well. What a player. She's always had that in her as well. That skill, but also that total fearlessness. I remember commentating on her scoring Manchester United's first goal in the WSL against Liverpool way back in September 2019 when she was just 17 years old and even then was remotely bothered by the stage of a derby and of course at this point in time when she was even younger was with Arsenal something few might necessarily know but now very much a blue and aren't Chelsea happy about it signing for a six-figure sum and Hannah Blundell going the other way Charles. Right and cutting in. It's something that we've seen tactically from Chelsea a fair bit. James particularly likes to do it. And he's starting wide, then cutting in to come inside and support Kerr. Perisset. Quite get her angles right for James. James keeps it in. Perisay. Pressed initially by Snell, but now Bright's managed to get it away for Charles. Interception from Shimizu, who wins the throw off Charles. Well, I was going to mention at some point tonight that with Camilla Hardy's record at this stadium being so good that it prompted. Uh, extensive humour on social media with her two hat-tricks here in recent times and a brace as well, eight goals in her last four trips. The Dane being out might give some tiny sense of relief to West Ham, but Chelsea have only demonstrated what we already knew, which is, of course, they've got plenty of different attacking threats to hurt you. One person on a Chelsea fans podcast saying if Penilla Harder was fit, then having Sam Kerr and saying we need to rest Kerr is like saying... Well, Ferrari's not available, but here's a Bugatti Veyron. In the case of Harder, she, of course, is not available at the moment due to long-term injury, but is hoping to be back before the end of the season. It's like Crossfield. She was intercepted. Phyllis is getting Chelsea sandwich in terms of the press. They had to get it away quickly and only ended up giving it away. Now Cuthbert sets it back for Bright. Chelsea hunting yet more goals. Got four here last season, of course. Harder scored a hat trick. Cuthbert was on target. Svitkova and Hussein scoring for West Ham. Makes on down injured here. Just got caught late on her left ankle. Looks to be in a fair bit of pain from that challenge as well. There it is. It was a say. Pressing high. Nothing malicious, but just a bit clumsy. Magdalena Eriksson, who will be desperate to stay out there, the Chelsea skipper, of course, back into the starting lineup for this one. And the Hayes having a quick tactical chat with Yves Perisset. Place against. Arsenal in the final, up for grabs. 
Chelsea could actually become the first side to win the Conti Cup without playing a home game. Of course, they've got to buy straight to the quarter-finals because of their Champions League group stage commitments. And in an even stranger twist, could be the first side to win it without leaving London. Here's Cuthbert. Cuthbert forward looking for Kerr. That's a brilliant ball from Cuthbert. It's Sam Kerr. But Mackenzie Arnold just about got there first. Arnold having played against Kerr so many times in training games for Australia will know all too well what a danger Sam Kerr is. But it's one thing knowing that. It's another thing dealing with it. But that was good sweeper keeper work from her. Of course, those two will be teaming up for Australia this coming summer. They're in Group B of the Women's World Cup alongside the Republic of Ireland, Nigeria and Canada. It looks to be quite an open group. Look on from Kirby. Kerr on. Bright. Now Ingle. Kirby. Charles. Shimizu with the interception. Sai. She put her hands out for a second there, Asai, just to signal, what have I got on? This time really struggling to keep the ball or indeed progress it when they have it right now. Forward from Arnold, intercepted by Ericsson, and now Kirby, West Ham are wide open here. Kirby sliding past Sissoko and then in for Cuthbert. Good save by Arnold. Mackenzie Arnold just about keeps West Ham from going 4 0 down. Slight push on Kirby from Abby Lee Stringer, a frustrated push. That sums up the emotions for West Ham. We're just over the half hour mark passed here. The timing of the pass from Kirby was perfect. You'd expect nothing less. Anyone who's been used to watching her class so often over the years initially made her name at Reading for joining Chelsea and now, of course, their all time goals and assists record holder. She's been very open about her off field battles as well. And I think, regardless of your colours or indeed your affiliations when it comes to football, anyone can agree that it's fantastic to see her out there doing what she does best and doing it so well. Perisay over the dead ball. Of course, it was a set piece that led to the first goal. Perisay's delivery. Arnold is not convincing. It's on force back. Now Cuthbert. Berger. He's looking for Kerr. Found Kerr. He could only head it to Fisk. Ashley. Moka Hayashi, a summer signing from Ike in Sweden after beginning her career at Suiza Osaka in Japan. And a touch from Bright. Can West Ham build a little bit, bit of momentum here? Can they get one goal back before half time? That could make such a difference. You see on that far side as well, the Pride of Ein's flag in shot. Great to see that kind of visible open representation in his member of the LGBTQ plus community myself can certainly speak to the fact that it's an incredibly welcoming place women's football and long may that continue speaking of welcoming West Ham United had a songbook out for fans joining tonight printed even with various individual chants for different players Right now on the pitch, it's been a really tough first half for them against Chelsea side at, if not not too far off, I'd say they're very best. Charles forward, intercepted by Fisk. Brynjars Dottir. Lovely ball on the swivel turn from Brynjars Dottir. Bringing Snurl into things. Slightly heavy touch, good pressure from Perisse to force the mistake. From Emma Snell. 
joined in January on a two and a half year contract from Fortuna Curing a year or so ago. On by Cuthbert, picked up by Stringer. Now Fisk. Arnold Ford. Ends up flicking it on to Snarl. Takes the throw. Asai. It's dangerous in positions like this. Looking to turn and turning well. Finding Snarl. Snarl's cross. Good block from Ericsson who was reaching for it. Now Fisk. Talented young English centre half who has vast amount of experience for a 24-year-old. Hayashi, good quick feed. It's up against Cuthbert. Charles can get it away. Foul on Stringer. Chesky with thinking to do. Chesky previously assistant in the last season under Oli Harder. And they've been a coach at the West Ham men's side as well. Also an assistant at Billerick and Town after his career as a journeyman defender. And by Snell. Cuthbert. Chelsea so dangerous on the break in situations like this, but it hits the back of James. He was already setting off on the foot race. set piece for West Ham what can they make of it floated up it away by Kerr who was back there very useful aerially in both boxes Sam Kerr so Chira Musevic once saying about Sam Kerr when she heads the ball it is like she is flying indeed a few commenting that Jess Carter's headed goal the opener against Spurs at the weekend had a bit of Sam Kerr about it in the way she jumped not the worst player to be learning from. Foul on Wrighton. Injury delay here. Kirby, who's down. her reaction I don't think this is good news for Frank Kirby seems to be visibly distressed as we look back at the goals Kerr made it 1-0 in just the fourth minute it was 2-0 in the tenth thanks to Frank Kirby there and then two became three and Sam Kerr found the top corner she's already got a couple of hat-tricks this season and she's got a fair old chunk of time left to make it three she has scored a hat-trick against West Ham before a 3-2 win in December 2020 in the WSL. It is uh, strange to think that once upon a time, Sam Kerr was the kid who hated football, had no interest in, in it, actually much preferred to play Aussie rules. But uh, that is an ultimate decision that has turned out to be a good one, no doubt. The day here is because of Fran Kirby being down. Let's hope this isn't quite as serious as it might look. I'll be limping off. And that was how it happened. The 
for now. Chelsea down to 10. As they see if they can keep Kirby out there. It's of course not far from half time, so there might just be a thought that if she can get through to half time, then that's another 15 minutes that the physio can work on it. They'll be visibly grimacing. <laughs> Getting a very generous ovation from the Chelsea away fans. She's walking past now. My information is from her body language that we won't see Frank Kirby back out there, but it remains to be seen. Super Frank Kirby held heard ringing out across the Chigwell Construction Stadium, particularly from Chelsea away fans. And Chelsea are attacking towards in this first half. Now they've shown every intent of continuing what is a dominating head-to-head -head record against West Ham. Sides drew one all in March 2019 when Beth England, now of Spurs, had Chelsea in front just before half-time. Gilly Flaherty equalised for West Ham. That is the only time in 12 meetings that Chelsea haven't won. Chelsea won their first meeting with West Ham 2-0 in November 2018. And there was that 1-1 one, one draw. And since then, it is a pretty awful reading for West Ham. Ten straight wins for Chelsea since. 2-0, 3-1, 8-0, 3-2, 6-0, 2-0, 4-2, 2-0, 4-1, 3-1. Last one coming back last September in the WSL. And as things stand, it looks like Chelsea are only going to add another win to that tally. But the beauty of sport is the unpredictability. West Ham will think if they can just get one back here, they can get the home fans going, maybe change the momentum a bit before half-time. Fisk wins the foul off Cuthbert. Berger under a bit of pressure from Brynjars Dottir in a say. They've been West Ham's key attacking threats this season. Those are the two Hammers fans will be particularly looking towards. They've scored nine of West Ham's 15 league goals between them. Cuthbert scoring... Cuthbert intercepting there, I should say, Brynjars Dottir scoring three of West Ham's five Conti Cup goals across the season so far. Foul on James. Frank Kirby trooping all the way around, it looks like heading down the tunnel. Frank Kirby's evening will be over. Not a bad player to bring on though, and I'm being Slightly sarcastic in saying that, an exceptional player to bring on. It only speaks to Chelsea's depth. Jelena Chankovic, who was uh, Chelsea's Player of the Month from the at Chelsea Women Supporters Club Social, who can be found on at CFCW Social. Mega Hearn writing a piece about how impressive the Serbian has been for Chelsea across January. Chankovic settling into her first season after the, at the club after signing in the summer from Rosengård. Cuthbert in between the lines. Landing right and minimum of two minutes added on at the end of this first half. A bit scrappy from West Ham and it's broken for Kerr and a hat-trick. It's Sam Kerr! And it's a hat-trick. A third hat-trick this season for Sam Kerr. West Ham just couldn't really deal with it, and Sissoko ends up inadvertently assisting the Australian, who just doesn't miss. A second career hat-trick against West Ham United. And it's not even at half-time. We can say with some certainty, Chelsea are marching into the Conti Cup final for a fourth straight season. This is not just a way of winning a cup semi-final, but this is a, a statement of a performance. This is the kind of performance that the uh, side puts in when they're aware of the fact that a Champions League quarter-final draw is maybe coming the following day. This is the kind of performance 
level that Chelsea are going to need to carry them forward in Europe as well. Remember that you can get all things Chelsea on social media at Chelsea FCW, all things West Ham on at West Ham Women. There's no account for this competition in particular, but at Barclays WSL would be the best place to head. If you have any thoughts, comments or questions for me, your commentator, about this first half, or let us know where you're watching from as well. It'd be great to hear from you. You can find me on at This Is McCann, M W C A N N. Michael McCann, but always good to hear from you about where you're watching the coverage from. And well, I would say hopefully you're enjoying it, but you'll be enjoying it a heck of a lot more if you're a Chelsea fan than a West Ham one. That is an incredibly accomplished performance from Chelsea. A hat-trick for Sam Kerr. You had them in front in just the fourth minute. Frank Kirby made it two with 10 minutes not even on the clock. And then Kerr added a couple more before the half-time break to get a second career hat-trick against West Ham United, a third across all competitions this season. And at half-time, Chelsea are beyond in control. West Ham are going to have to do something that is the miracle of all miracles if they're to fight their way back into this. At half-time, it's Chelsea 4, West Ham nil. Welcome back to the Chigwell Construction Stadium for the second half of West Ham against Chelsea. I was trying to find the exact words to describe that first half performance from Chelsea. And uh, during the halftime break, they were playing Dua Lipa's Levitating. And to be honest, that feels like as good a word as any, because in attack in particular, at times, Chelsea were levitating, mesmerising, almost floating their way through West Ham at times, through the likes of Kerr, James, Wrighton, and of course, the entire 11 combining so beautifully. Chelsea in the goal with the keeper Berger now attacking from left to right as we look at things. West Ham in the claret and blue attacking from right to left. Paul Koncheski has spent 15 minutes trying to work out how to change the momentum of things. And he's gone for a couple of changes. Noko Hayashi has made way for Kate Longhurst. And Shannon Cook has come on to make her debut as well, signed as a free agent in early February. And it's triple change as well. In fact, they've made four. So that is the flexibility that football, particularly since coronavirus offers, with it now going to five subs. It does mean greater tactical flexibility, but that is something you very rarely see. It is a quadruple half-time substitution for West Ham. Shannon Cook comes on for a debut. Kate Longhurst. And then Amelie Grombig Testrup comes on for just her second appearance since signing. And Lucy Parker on as well. So it's a very much new look, West Ham United. Here's James, looking to continue where she left off in the first half. Chelsea looking to make it five. Set wide by Chankovic. Plenty of options on the cross. Instead, it's a tickle back to Kerr. Now Ingle. Space out here for Perise. Pass not quite where it needed to be for Shimizu of those changes running through on your screen. No shortage of them either. 
because she can make five changes in three interruptions. Next time choosing to make four at the half time break. Cheski in further conversations with his coaching staff. Trying to see if at the very least they can stop the scoreline piling up. With the uh, well, miracle of miracles doesn't even cover it if they were to somehow score four without reply to drag this time in, tie into extra time and penalties. Dottier trying to rally something for West Ham. And now Stottier looking forward, but not quite on the same wavelength in terms of the run. And then he grounded Testrop had looking to go in behind, Brynjars Dottier was looking to go short. Longhurst will bring energy, passion and quality in central midfield. Only survivor from the West Ham United side that lost 3-0 against Chelsea, against Manchester City, I should say, beg your pardon, in the FA Cup final in 2019. And from and Stanway and Walsh seal victories. His Kerr could have her fourth. It is Kerr and stopped by Arnold. Had to take it first time on the run. It's just a bit too close to the keeper. Rolled into the path of Kerr beautifully. And there was Arnold to tip it over. taking the corner more defending to do for West Ham here Perisay's ball in Arnold came and did not get there and he did a frantic clearance to keep it at four who was back there. <laughs> Tactically, it looks to me like West Ham United have potentially gone to a back three with wing backs here. More of a 5 3 2, potentially with big test drop up front alongside his side. Seems to me like the recent signing Shannon Cook, who joined as a free agent in recent times, has gone into the middle of centre back trio. Really difficult situation to come on and make your debut for Cook. He was previously co-captain at the Louisiana State University team in the NCAA SEC. Played 86 of 94 games as a starter during her time at LSU, scoring nine goals. Was born in Watford and had been a youth player at Arsenal before heading to the US. Was fifth in all-time appearances in the LSU during her time in America. Majoring in kinesiology. And now Cook on the pitch trying to stop this rampant Chelsea side. And may themselves have some eyes on some rotation substitutions. So that's slipped in behind for Snell. He does at least make Berger worked. 
at her near post. But Berger worked in a way that the keeper of her quality wasn't going to have a problem with it. It's not as much as anything else knew she had to take this first time to keep it alive. There's options left and right. One of them is James. Wrighton. Clips four for James. Longhurst just about got in there in time. It'll be a yellow card for Magdalena Eriksson. Could be foul and a say. Classic tussle between centre back and centre forward. Magdalena Eriksson going into the book. Joining Chelsea way back now. It feels like a long time ago in 2017 from Ling Chirping in Sweden, one of the best clubs across Scandinavia in terms of both producing and developing players. Olsen in. Nobody really got much of a touch on it, so now here's Fisk. Kirsty Smith. Smith's driven cross. Berger came and didn't get there. Comes back for Longhurst, who lifts it in. Berger again unconvincing. It's cleared by Charles. Now James. He loves broken up scenarios like this in open play where defence isn't set. I mean, quite frankly, at the moment, Lauren James pretty much loves any scenario with the ball at her feet. Incredibly difficult to stop. It's also pretty scary that she's uh, still so young, of course. She's 21. My brother Reese tweeting that he's super proud of her. She inspires me every day and will be the best women's player in the world for the next 10 to 15 years and is technically better than some Premier League players who plays with, of course, representing the Chelsea men's team. Perisay, now Kerr, Wrighton, was thinking of setting it wide for James, he does get it now off Ingle, James, it's Lauren James, deflected and in. Nobody's stopping Lauren James at the moment, and West Ham certainly weren't there. The way she's been playing tonight just felt inevitable that she'd score at some point. Did take a deflection that made things even more difficult for Arnold, but will rightly be going down as James's goal. A seventh this season across all competitions. Well, Radha Gupta from She Talks Ball was pointing out in the build-up to this one that James with her six goals so far and indeed across all her goal contributions was having her best season yet. And that is yet another one for Chelsea supporters to celebrate and add to the growing tally. James, of course, scored that mesmerising solo goal where she drifted in off the right flank and cut in and slalomed her way through plenty of Spurs players before slotting the ball in on her left foot. Chelsea already have five and also concerningly for West Ham. Lucy Parker seems to have picked up quite a bad knock there. Will indeed be coming off, Parker. Well, that's really sad to see. She'd only come on at half-time. And, of course, it was injury that kept her out of the Lionesses squad that she'd been called up for in the autumn. So Anouk Denton comes on. It goes from bad to worse for West Ham United. Denton makes her second debut. She did play three times on loan in a previous spell for West Ham United. As we joined them in January after previously also spending time at Louisville and 
the US college system playing in the NCAA. And Luke Denton on for a second debut. Not an easy time to make it, and that really is an understatement. And now you would sense that West Ham onto, are on to possibly some of the uh, little wins rather than the overall story. Can they at least get a goal? Can they keep Chelsea from piling more on? They can't go to their bench and worryingly for West Ham, if they get an injury now, they are down to 10, unfortunately. With Parker forced off, and of course they've made those four changes, you might remember in the first half. You would have said that West Ham might have some confidence facing Arsenal in the final, knowing that they've got that draw to dent the Gunners' title campaign at Bourne Wood on Sunday. But that all feels for the birds now. Chelsea, of course, knowing that if they get through, it means they'll end up playing Arsenal four times this season, twice in the WSL. They had a one-all draw at the Emirates last month Sam Kerr with a late equaliser after Kim Little had Arsenal in front they'll meet in the FA Cup fifth round so it's just too much on that they'll play for a spot in the quarterfinals later this month and then they'll meet in the Conti Cup final Chelsea certainly will back themselves going into those two cup games and the league return game particularly given their impressive head-to-head -head record against Arsenal lost just one of their last 11 meetings with the Gunners across all competitions. As Berger has to be alert once more as Saeed trying to get in behind. Three of those games draws, Chelsea winning seven across the last four seasons against Arsenal. And did win the league opener between the two last season. Not the only victory for them across that spell. Chelsea winning eight trophies since Arsenal last won one, which was the WSL back in 2019. And of course, Chelsea would love nothing more than to knock Arsenal out of both the Conti Cup and the FA Cup to help keep that run going for the Gunners. And of course, so now one good performance in the Conti Cup final from ending their wait. Is Perise on the overlap, completely unmarked. Perise's little floated cross, and there's Kerr. Yet another... Chelsea have hit West Ham for six. Sam Kerr with her fourth. The goal's just piling up. It was all too easy. Credit to Chelsea, but when they look back on this one West Ham in video analysis I think there was so much more they could have done Kerr was free in the box Perisay had forever and a day to put the cross in Chelsea set to make changes two to be precise to go with one earlier on that saw Chankovic come on if Perisette's last action of the game will be that assist. And Mielder comes on. The mother hen of the Chelsea group, as once described by Emma Hayes. Mielder, who has plenty of history in this competition, started in Chelsea's wins in the 2020 final against Arsenal and in 2021 against Bristol City was an unused sub in the final last season. and trying to work something trying to at least deny Chelsea their clean sheet Charles concedes the throw
just to confirm that second change. Lauren James going off and Brianna Rittinkanarid coming on. Kanarid still hunting for her first Chelsea goal. I'd love to get one here to help pile the pain on West Ham. Brianna Rittinkanarid, summer signing, still settling into life at Chelsea and what Emma Hayes wants from her is something that has often been seen in Emma Hayes' ways of evolving the team through uh, more than a decade going on 11 years in charge now as Longhurst pass hits referee Saunders so we'll resume with West Ham free kick because they had possession of it Brignard Stottier is down, but it's not a head injury, so Chelsea play on. Comes back for Ingle. <laughs> Thinking to do for Paul Koncheski, a very tough night for his side who uh, have been on something of an upward trajectory until this evening. Had three clean sheets in a row. Got something off Arsenal for the first time in their history. Had that 1-0 win at Liverpool in the quarterfinals, a 2-0 win at lower tier Wolverhampton Wanderers to progress into the fifth round of the FA Cup, where they've got Aston Villa at home. Meanwhile, for Chelsea, three consecutive home games coming next. That FA Cup fifth round tie against Arsenal in late February. And then, well, it was Brighton at home, but it'll be a Conti Cup final now in the first weekend of March. That will have to be rescheduled. And Manchester United at home in the league on the 12th of March. And Manchester City away on the 26th. Here's Ingle on the turn. Welsh midfielder. Gets it wide for Cankovic. Cankovic, pace and possession. And then Brighton on the turn, deflected and in. Seven heaven for Chelsea. Ruthless. Gura Wrighton gets a goal to go with her assist for the opener. It takes a wicked nick on the way through off Grace Fisk. Arnold quite probably had it covered, that first angle would suggest. But it mattered not. Goals in back to back games for Gura Wrighton. He's on to four for the season. Another change coming for Chelsea. Sophie Ingle departs. And on comes Melanie Leupholz for her third appearance, returning back post pregnancy. And Alsu Abdelina comes on as well for Gura Wrighton, whose last action in this one will be scoring that goal. Wrighton's such an impressive player. Lioness's captain Leah Williamson saying in the Wrighty's House podcast last season that she felt Gura Wrighton was the most underrated player in the English women's football domestic circuit. And she's yet again shown her qualities tonight. It's a, a big part. Chelsea's embarrassment of attacking riches that they have at their disposal. Chelsea have now made all five changes. In fact, I beg your pardon, they make it, they've made four. Wright has to put it out. Properly got that one away Karen 
Beg your pardon, up to a double count, as I'd first suspected. Both teams have completed their substitute allocation now, five each done. No further changes in the last quarter of this one. And the fact that Chelsea have used all five that early reflects the kind of rotation they want to make in terms of minutes. They know that the game is more than sealed up. It's something that various Chelsea fan podcasts were talking about in terms of being important and noticing that there has been more of a managing of minutes this season from Emma Hayes than potentially last season and that might well help Chelsea continue to compete on all four fronts Andre and Mia Eriksson on Frank Kirby Spike Club saying that they feel like Chelsea are better can play better place to compete at the very top level in the UEFA Women's Champions League this season due to the way they've evolved and that rotation and the squad at her disposal too as well as picking up on a few other themes such as Jesse Fleming playing in the 10 role against Spurs showing her versatility Fleming tonight on the bench and unused and that just gives you a sense of quite what Chelsea have in their squad dropping deep to link the play getting the one two with low pulse Kerr sets it wide all in blocked initially come back for Abdulina hasn't had an awful lot of minutes since signing for Chelsea was part of the side who played in the Conti Cup final last season coming on in the defeat against Manchester City Not sure whether you might have picked that one up on our effects microphone, but the Chelsea fans who are at the opposite end of the ground to the one that their side are attacking in the second half, singing, are you watching Arsenal? Caron sliding it in behind. It could be eight. Just went a bit wider, Ritting Kanarid. Now the cross can come in. Ball in. Her frustrated she hasn't scored a fourth. And it's an attitude like that, which is why well, she's as good as she is. Now Cuthbert puts it back in. Here's Longhurst. Can West Ham make something happen? They've barely had the ball all game. Sai up there, but Ericsson tidies up. With relative ease. Back with Bright. Might be interested to know West Ham are actually holding open trials this Saturday for young girls to come down and trial to be part of the club's academy. And on the understanding that quite a few first team players will be in attendance as well. That was kept in play, it seems. Flashes into the side netting from Neve Charles. West Ham with a proud history, their initial ladies team as it was known back then formed in the early 70s but they've been in this modern incarnation since 1991 and various chapters through that journey in the 2015-16 season players walked out at the start of the campaign due to a lack of funding and in 2018 though of course was that BBC3 documentary about Britain's youngest box with Jack Sullivan in charge and then in 2018-19 became fully professional changed their name to West Ham United FC Women and successfully applied to join the WSL were granted a license been in solid mid-table sort of form ever since throughout then in the league campaign with some occasional moments of potentially worrying they might get dragged into a relegation battle in recent seasons finishing 7th, 8th, ninth, and then the best of 6th last season Holly Harder departing after feeling like he'd taken the team as far as he could series of collisions in midfield it ends up with Emma Snell on the floor but no free kick given Cuthbert now gets it forward to Abdulina 
He can only pass it out for a goal kick. Kuchinchewski in charge at West Ham. Once upon a time, 70 appearances for the West Ham United men's team as a player. A couple of caps for England as well on the men's side. Part of the Fulham team as well reached the Europa League final in 2010. He's really talked a lot this season about how he sees a cup run as a big part of West Ham's season. It's got them to a semi-final. But it will be ending here, their journey. They can still dream in the FA Cup. Competition which that man there, of course, has plenty of history with too. Having played for West Ham in one back in 2006. On by Ritten Karnarid. Fisk with the interception. Just to try and stem this Chelsea attack. Back with Bright. Longhurst. Shemin pass one, now Snell. Back to Fisk. Chelsea chasing more goals. Their best against West Ham is eight, which they got in their third meeting against them. Clip ball forward, but not really anywhere near a claret and blue shirt from Shannon Cook. Cook, one of a number of additions in and around the January transfer window. Well, even if you didn't know the score, those facial reactions and body language from the Chelsea fans will tell you all you need to know about what a night it has been for their side. Still time for more goals as well. It's bright. Good pressing in there, and well won by it from Big Test Drop. It ends up the feet of Ericsson. Now Bright. Really Bright here amongst her run of honours. Six-time WSL winner, four FA Cups, two League Cups, Conti Cups as it's known, a Community Shield, a Euros winner, and an Arnold Clark Cup winner and Arnold Clark Cup Golden Boot co-winner. It's also joked by some to be NASA's official asteroid defence test unit. Something that went around on social media in reference to the fact that she will head pretty much anything. But all flippancy aside, is quite the player for club and country and will be a big part of the Lionesses' World Cup ambitions this summer as here come Chelsea chasing an eighth. Ritten Carnarid slaloming her way through. Still Ritten Carnarid. And it was flicked goalwards by Cankovic. Chelsea appealing for the corner and getting the corner. Tinkanarid was just a bit off balance when she dinked that back goalwards. Cuthbert over the set piece. Cuthbert's dead ball delivery. Hooked away by Snell. Charles. Little interception in there from Cook. Shannon Cook settling back into life in a claret and blue shirt in her second debut for West Ham. In comes the corner. Well away by Fisk. And set wide by Abdulina. Chance on the turn and a really good save needed by Arnold. Eriksson keeps it in play just. And the whole ball has got to be across the line. Didn't look to me like it quite was. Assistant referee agreed with that view. Eriksson played on. 
they have to settle for a corner. Magdalena Eriksson in a slightly unfamiliar position there. Chelsea hunting number eight. Decent corner. It's headed away by Brynjars Dottir. Abdulina with the shot. Eriksson touched his it on and Kerr was offside. Abdulina Eriksson again making mischief going forward. And the Hay is able to sit back and enjoy her side 7 0 up in total control. For those who might not necessarily know the history of her career, of course, first built her coaching career at Arsenal and credits ex Arsenal boss Vic Akers as a big influence on her. But since taking charge of Chelsea in August 2012, has made them the force that they are. It's Kerr. There's half an interception from Brynjars Dottir. No pulse. Gets it now. Lloyd Poles down the line. Another good chance for Chelsea. And then smashed over by Charles. Just got her foot underneath it, Neve Charles, and ended up scooping it over the bar. Has already scored a couple of times this season. But can't add to that tally here. It was played across by Ritten Karnarid initially. Nice quick feet from Kirsty Smith, once of Manchester United. Signed in the summer from there. Having began her career at Hibs. And joining Manchester United as one of the originals. As Manchester United got going in 2018 and came straight up from the Championship into the WSL. On to the Olays from the Chelsea fans. I'm almost surprised this didn't come earlier on with the score line as it is. Ericsson has managed to get it through. What a magnificent ball from Ericsson and just over the bar from Joanna Rittinkanari. Could have been her first goal for Chelsea. Wasn't far off. The Swedish link up. Going so beautifully until the finish. Well, if you want an example, a prime example of Magdalena Eriksson's left footed progressive passing, you won't find a better one. And that is what she gives Chelsea in build up. Started the 2020 and 2021 Conti Cup finals. Eriksson, an unused sub last season when. Double from Caroline Weir and a goal from Ellen White helped Manchester City come from behind to win that one 3 1. Of course, they won't be making it this far. Out against Arsenal last night. Chelsea set to be joining Arsenal in the final. It is those three teams that have shared the competition Chelsea winning it twice, Manchester City four times, and Arsenal five times. Birmingham City the closest to disrupting that three time runners up. Arsenal and Manchester City actually shared the first eight between them. Arsenal winning it five times, Manchester City on three occasions. And Chelsea never even reached the final until a few years ago. Pull back for Ritten Carnery, who totally mistimed a kick, and then that's flashed wide. Mielder trying her luck to get what would be a rare goal for Marin Mielder. Took Emma Hayes' side quite a while to reach the Conti Cup final, but in recent seasons they've come a long way to taking control of the competition. They're marching into their fourth straight final on two of their three so far. 
It's a theme across recent seasons, the dominance of Chelsea and Manchester City and Arsenal between them. Those three all finishing in the top three in the WSL in various combinations and winning every major trophy since 2015. Indeed, those three have won every FA Cup between them since 2011-12 season when Birmingham City won on penalties against Chelsea in the final. Ball breaks for Snell. Who couldn't quite get it where she wanted to and instead ends up having to chop Cuthbert down to stop the counter-attack. mentioned to you just before half time to get in touch with me on at this is McCann and double C A double N about where you're watching from. We've had viewers from parts of Poland, Florida, Kenya and Australia as well amongst other places. Great to have your company wherever you are. Understandably if you're a Chelsea supporter or inclined that way you'll be a lot happier than if you were hoping the Hammers could cause an upset. Chelsea chasing yet more from this set piece, like any good top team, greedy for more goals. In it comes. I'll be down initially by Brynjars Stotts here and then smashed wide by Melanie Loipos. That would have been quite a way to mark her return. After time out with her pregnancy, Magdalena Eriksson writing an article recently where she talked about how brilliantly she's been looked after by everyone at Chelsea and how both Loipos and her new little one have been welcomed in it's great to see in something that is hopefully only changing in a positive way in the game of course there was the story around events concerning Sarah Bjork and Astotir and events at Lyon and Ericsson saying that it was a, a very different story of Lloyd Poles at Chelsea which is good to hear Chelsea who so often have been at the forefront of various things in terms of innovating in the women's game it's that crossfield ball has too much on it Kate Rowan writing in The Telegraph back in February 2020 about how Chelsea were the first club to tailor their training schedules to players' menstrual cycles, driven by Emma Hayes in relation to injury prevention and keeping athletes in the best condition possible. Jesse Fleming and Aaron Cuthbert talking in content around this about how valuable that's been for them. Cuthbert saying that it's reduced pain, helped her understand her body more and stay on the pitch a lot more. On the pitch right now, it is Chelsea cruising to victory. Jankovic. Jankovic forward for Kerr in the channel. He was offside. Apologies for any choice language you might have just picked up on our FX microphones. Into the last five minutes here. And Emma Hayes will be keeping her eyes on making sure her side don't switch off. Harry Edwards pointing out that after Nikola Karczewska's late goal for Spurs to set up a grandstand finish as Chelsea held on to win 3-2, Chelsea have now already conceded four goals in the last five minutes of games this season compared to just two from across all of last season. They want to get themselves a clean sheet, which would be their first since the resumption of games after the traditional Christmas and New Year break. Conceding six in their last four games since that 3-0 win against PSG at Stamford Bridge just before Christmas to emphatically round off their group stage campaign. Had that one-all draw with Chelsea, 3-1 win against Spurs, and then a 3-2 victory against Spurs with a 3-2 FA Cup win against Liverpool sandwiched in between. Of course, one of those games against Spurs was the Conti Cup quarter-final. Mielda, back for Berger. of time for Mielda. Of course, has her own history with this competition. Marin Mielda got an awful injury in the final against Watford back in 2021. 
that game at Vicarage Row when they thrashed Bristol City 6-0 and one of the big things this motivation for Chelsea was doing it for Mialda after she picked up that horrible injury that kept her out for so long Snell trying to break through got past Abdulina but played it straight to Bright Daniel Stottier with the interception Shimizu couldn't quite thread it through chance to get the throw Chelsea, of course, are still fighting on all four fronts for silverware this season, and based on tonight's performance, with uh, every chance of picking up a few trophies. This car. Just slightly not brought under control. But again, West Ham can't build something themselves. Chelsea hunting an eighth. Mealder. Back for Cuthbert. Now Bright. Back with Ericsson. Sprinting past. Amelie Grombig test drop. West Ham's new Danish striker, signed on loan from PSV Eindhoven at the end of January. He's previously played in England with Liverpool in the Championship. Jankovic. Mielda. Britain can read. Now Arnold. Just one additional minute at the end of this one. A game that West Ham United will be desperate to be done with. Brynja Stottir. In his case of job emphatically done for Chelsea. Kerr on. Fisk intercepts. Chelsea, of course, who've got so much going for them at the moment. They even had Aggie Beaver Jones as agent Beaver Jones helping them take points off Manchester United at the weekend in a goalless draw against Everton. It's all going the Blues' way right now, it feels. Two points clear at the top of the WSL. Still fighting on all four fronts. It's seventh heaven for Chelsea. Seven goals for Emma Hayes' side tonight as they fly into a fourth straight Conti Cup final and will seek to regain the title that they'd won twice in a row before defeat to Manchester City in last season's showpiece. Four goals for Sam Kerr, Frank Kirby, Lauren James and Guru Wrighton on target in an emphatic performance that makes it 12 wins from 13 against West Ham. They've never lost against them and the Hammers didn't come close to causing an upset tonight. It will be Chelsea against Arsenal in the first weekend of March in the Conti Cup final.